to coax the blues right out of the horn. Mame, you charm the husk right off of the corn. Mame. Now, perhaps it was the spirit herself who burned the image of Mame Dennis into me after I just happened to see the musical Mame during Pentecost week a few years ago because I have never lost the image of the Holy Spirit as Mame, the crazy red-haired aunt in the family, the boisterous, provocative, life-loving, teller of truth and practitioner of radical hospitality, Auntie Mame. And let me tell you why. But first, let's go back to the scene set in our vivid reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They are gathered all together in one place, in great anticipation, waiting for the one Jesus said would appear. Yet even with this sense of imminence, the seat where Jesus would have been sitting must have seemed very empty. I picture it as a family gathering, a reunion of sorts, the first after the passing of the head of the family. Before he passed, he has arranged for this guest to take his place. I imagine the others at that dinner, they're speculating about what the guest will be like, how it will be to celebrate without their beloved master, with this new guest among them. And then in she comes. Suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. Here she comes, and as they say, she really knows how to take over the room. She blows in with flaming red hair and just mixes everything up. She laughs a little louder than everyone else. She says whatever is on her mind. She totally rearranges the seating chart. She takes the party outside, and the people are left stunned, unsettled. The neighbors certainly notice, but they're also inspired and full of joy and possibility and purpose. And that's what Maine does to people. Now, I watched some videos of the Broadway production this week. Angela Lansbury is just great. And I have to say, I'm, I'm not sure that the musical would pass muster for today's audiences. It might need a little rehabilitation, but I'm going with it anyway. Ever flamboyant, that's a flame reference in case you missed it, Maine was famous for extravagant parties that brought together eclectic bohemian guests. She was described as having a wit as sharp as vodka and a heart as free as her spirit. Her motto is, life's a banquet and most poor suckers are starving to death. Her admirers sing to her, you came, you saw, you conquered, and absolutely nothing is the same. You've made us feel alive again. You've given us the drive again. Now, doesn't that sound like the Holy Spirit? The Spirit came to continue Jesus' business of holy disruption, that is, of bringing the kingdom of God nearer. We're reminded in the beautiful verses from our psalm that through the Holy Spirit, God has the power to make and remake the world, whether as a small, still voice, a mighty wind, or a flame of love. The Spirit's presence is the difference in Genesis between a formless void and the perfect shalom of God's creation. In Acts, between a mere assembly of people and the body of Christ in the world. During the 40 days after his resurrection and before his ascension, Jesus had been moving amongst the disciples again, filling their broken hearts with hope and purpose. Earlier in Acts, he has told them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and told them to stay in Jerusalem and wait. And it is here where the disciples come to understand that it is not enough just to see the risen Christ. They have to take him into their hearts. And that is what the Holy Spirit, what John calls the advocate, the spirit of truth, is sent to do. The spirit is given to us to animate and energize us, to dwell in us, so that we may accomplish God's work in the world. Now, the main story 
is set in the 1920s. Mame has adopted her orphaned nephew, Patrick, and is fighting her late brother's stuffy lawyers who want him sent to a stuffy boarding school. She wants Patrick to be a sensitive, caring, modern young man, open to everything life has to offer. She introduces him to her friends, an exiled Lithuanian bishop, a washed up singer, all kinds of artists and writers, and even to an unwed mother she has taken in. Along with some movers and shakers, these castoffs, people living at the edges of polite society. Mame encourages Patrick to ask her about anything. And once after a party, he says, Auntie, what is a heterosexual? It's a subtle illusion, but suffice it to say, I'm wondering if Mame would have been marching in the pride parade back then if they had had them. Patrick's life is expanded beyond all measure and he is absolutely thrilled with it all. However, later as a young man, he's backslid a bit. He brings home his fiance, a wealthy socialite and Mame quickly realizes that she is snooty and vacuous. Her family lives in a restricted community in Connecticut, meaning it excludes Jews and other so-called undesirables. Well, Mame is having none of that. Through a carefully and creatively planned disaster, she exposes the narrow-mindedness of Patrick's fiance and her family, and he sees the light. Then she buys the lot next to their compound in Connecticut and builds a home there for unwed mothers. There goes the neighborhood. The spirit is renewing the face of the earth. Like Maine, the spirit is not neutral. She carries God's bias towards justice and truth with her. She blows where she wills. She came to challenge the powers who rejected Jesus and all those who needed to be redeemed by him. And as our reading illustrates, she both glories in diversity and unites across difference. She leads us to places we didn't think we could go, crossing borders, transcending walls and boundaries, and speaking into the hearts of the most and least likely in turn. As the Spirit is still doing today, the flame was kindled in Peter and his friends, the ones who knew Jesus, but the Spirit came on Pentecost to spread the light of Christ like a wind fanning the flame, and so the movement continues. The Spirit comes variously as wisdom, her association with wisdom, Sophia, is sometimes why she is personified in the feminine. Truth, as John represents her, encourager, comforter, and sometimes as one who disrupts our comfort. Sometimes the Holy Spirit even works in our pain, afflicting us, prodding us to pay attention, to try something new, to listen to our bodies and take care of them better, to heal our own broken hearts, to do the hard work of forgiveness, to respond to our conscience, to speak up or step forward in faith. The Spirit builds us up and sometimes brings us to our knees and all for love's sake. Today's birthday celebration is made sweeter by new health guidelines that promise a return for many of us to gathering again, hugging again, traveling again, breathing again. And we should be joyful. Mame, after all, knew how to give a thumping party. Life's a banquet, as she said, but she invited those castoffs to her table. She lived the good life, but she shared it with them. And she was willing to get into a little good trouble if they needed an advocate. It all came from her love. She delighted in it, all of it. On this Pentecost day, we've donned our red and you see some special touches to celebrate the birth of the church, the anniversary of the gift of the spirit to us, the body of Christ. And we have set a special place at our table for her. But in truth, she is already here. For even in this accursed year, she has been with us at St. John's. Perhaps her breath 
is what helped us to take a deep breath and become Zoomers. And we learned how much caring and connection could happen even when we didn't leave our houses. Even when we, were, when we weren't in the same state. We figured out how to pray together, worship together, study together, read books out loud together, knit together, raise money together, serve on the vestry together, because the spirit was uniting us. Her creative force filled our musicians who gave us hymns and prayers and arias and opera and even that garage band. She whispered into Father Robert and Scott to keep their St. John the Baptist musical moving forward. Her truth has inspired us to open our eyes to injustice through Sacred Ground, our Lent Flick series, our Sunday forums, and especially in the work of our social justice ministries. Surrendering to her inspiration and letting it lead us has served us well indeed. So let us affirm her. Let us keep her close, our friend, our advocate, the crazy aunt in the family of God. Let us celebrate today all the ways the Spirit has inspired us and the saints before us and ask her to breathe into us anew, to wash over us, to take away our fear, and to fill us with creativity and purpose and maybe just a little holy disruption. Because, my friends, life's a banquet and too many people are starving to death. So we are going to need a bigger table. Happy birthday and alleluia. <laughs>